The Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference is in about five days. And I'll be ministering there, releasing a fresh power of God. A fresh glory of God is going to be so, so intense and beautiful and refreshing. Nothing scary, okay? Well, it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing moment of power and grace. I want to talk to you about how angels, how they increase in your life as you become more unselfish. The more unselfish you become, the more angels begin to enter into your life for specific purposes. There are angels that are connected to you operating in self-control, making yourself of no reputation, not trying to save your image. The Bible talks about having a good name. That means to deal with integrity with people. Like, I mean, if they, if you say that you're going to fix their toilet, fix their toilet. That's a good name. A good name is that you're honest. But me, and you both know that you have to understand the scriptures because persecution is when people attack your name. You can't help that. A good name is when you yourself are blameless towards people and God. That means that you're putting in the effort to yield to grace, yield to the Holy Spirit, yield to his wisdom, and, and you are you are putting in effort. Let me just tell you something. One dangerous thing that you have to be careful of is that grace works with effort because there was a grace for the Pharisees not to criticize Jesus. But they put no effort into that grace. There was grace for the thief at the cross to not slander Jesus and do what his partner thief had did. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There was grace for that. But he put no effort into that grace. Listen to me. Grace requires you to cooperate with it in effort. And let me just tell you this. Those of you all that come to this conference, you're going to be healed. Okay? You're going to be healed. That's a hundred percent. You come to this conference, you're going to be delivered. You come to this conference, you're going to experience a miracle in your body, in your mind, in your finances, you're going to experience that. That's a hundred percent. But what I'm what I'm telling you as a warning, do not be uptight. Do not be uptight. Be loose and be free. Do not beg God to heal you. And do not beg God to touch you. And do not beg God to feel you. Do not beg. Believe. They got this hymn that says, only believe, only believe all things are possible. Only believe, only believe, only believe all things are possible. Only believe Jesus is the sweetest. Name I know. You don't have to beg. You don't have to beg. You don't have to beg. You just receive. When you're uptight, the Lord cannot touch you the way that he wants to touch you. And when you're uptight, you don't experience what you're supposed to experience. Because when you're uptight, you're not in faith. Uptight and upright. Upright versus uptight. If you're uptight, you hinder God. If you're upright, 
you allow God. In the book of Acts, the power of the Holy Spirit began to fall because people were not uptight. They had begun to rest in the Lord and believe that he was going to touch them. And he touched them. Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is a place of surrender. And Pentecost is not a day in the year where you celebrate at a building. Pentecost is a time in a person's life where you come into rest. Where you're no longer uptight and religious. You're no longer trying to force the envelope. Not trying to make something happen. You're yielding to his spirit. So. Angels, they enter into one's life when you surrender and you're no longer uptight. You know, people, they miss the power of the spirit so many times because they're looking at how somebody looks. They're looking at their bank account. They're looking at their health diagnosis. They're looking at everything that makes them uptight. Just think about it. Satan has used the device of making people uptight so that they'll miss the anointing that's scheduled for them. So many people don't move in the anointing because they are uptight. Don't worry about what people are doing. Don't worry about what people are saying. Don't even worry about yourself. People don't get miracles because they're too in tune with their self. I need to be healed. I need to be delivered. I need to be helped. No, take the attention off of you. Put it on Jesus. Imagine Jesus and you'll recognize that Jesus will supply to you everything that you thought you needed. The blind man was crying out for Jesus, not their sight. They needed the sight. They wanted the sight. They needed Jesus. That's what I want to say. They wanted the sight. They desired the sight, but they needed Jesus. They wanted their eyes open, but they needed the eye opener. The problem that will arise in everybody's heart, the issue, is when you think that you need something solved, when all you need is someone who is the problem solver. And once you give him what he wants, he gives you what he wa what you want. Let me tell you something about the Lord. The Lord gives you what you want. But you got to give him what he wants because while you give him what he wants, you die to yourself and you agree with what he wants to give you anyway. While you're giving him what he wants, your mind begins to change. And your mind begins to come into agreement with his will. Satan will magnify your sickness, your disease, your financial problem. Those things all have a solution in Jesus. So King Jesus is the one that handles all those things that you magnify above him as a problem. When you magnify Jesus, those things that you thought were problems get enveloped and you'll see that he had the supply all along. Let me tell you this. Lastly, you have to get out of yourself to get out of problems. It's a powerful wisdom door. You have to get out of yourself to get out of problems. Many people are trying to get out of problems, but they're not getting out of self. And self is the bigger problem, bigger than your problems. The four leprous men, 
their problem was not poverty on the outside. It was poverty on the inside. And when they fixed the problem that they had in their heart, they fixed the problem that they had in their hand. So their real problem wasn't exterior. It was interior. The man, so they became rich. They became more wealthy than people that wasn't even in that predicament they were in. They were in leprosy and they were poor. And they got healed in their finances. They got healed in their conditional state. And they began to walk in prosperity because they had pit their attention not on their poverty, but they pit their attention on the voice of God, which was their prosperity. What hinders the anointing and the power of God is that you're studying things that are what you consider problems. Those things are still in your focus. And the focus is being robbed from Jesus. Today I had a encounter with the Lord and I saw him wearing, I, this is what I saw the Lord wearing in heaven, a ivory, a ivory garment, ivory. You know, you know, like we have white and then we have like that cream color. I saw the Lord wearing an ivory garment. And as soon as I had that vision of him, my whole body felt like water, cool water was going through my body. Like I was in like a jacuzzi or something, like some type of Niagara Falls that feels so good, like you taking a an amazing heavenly shower. And I felt coolness going through my physical body. After I saw the vision of the Lord wearing an ivory garment, an ivory garment garment ivory just think about this the lord changes his garment for purposes the garment signify how he thinks the garment signifies what he is pondering the garment signifies his office his authority his dominion his sovereignty the garments signify his mood he has different garments for different occasions. His garments signify what type of power he's releasing to the earth. For what purpose? The power comes with a purpose. That's why when you connect to God's purpose, you connect to his power. Because the power is in the purpose. The purpose when it enters into your heart and is your reality, then the power enters into your heart and it's your reality. And when power, when purpose fills your heart, power begins to be felt in your body. Your body is the after effect of what your heart has received. That's why if you ever see a dog, you get real nervous in your heart. Look how your bones start trembling. You ever see somebody pull out a gun? You get fearful in your heart. Look how your body starts to get stuck. Your body is following where your heart is. So how the anointing flows, which I'll show you in this conference as well. I'll show you. I'll show you. And you'll, you'll feel what I'm saying. I know some of you are feeling it right now. And when I say feeling it, I'm talking about the anointing. But feeling him, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? Feeling it, I'm talking about the power of the Spirit. Feeling him, I'm talking about the Spirit himself. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. And I've been in deep thoughts about this because the Holy Ghost is not being welcomed in people's pursuit of God so they're wasting their time there's people that go on fast there's people that pray they do all type of things and they're wasting their time because you're not inviting the Holy Spirit I want to say this lastly before I get off of here the 
the fastest path to power, the tangible fire of God, the baptism of the spirit, is that you invite the spirit and you ask him to take over what you're doing so that you don't do things in vain. I want to show you something. You notice I called the the conference within like 40 days. Like it was what less than a month or something. I called the conference like spontaneously. So just think about it. I can't go on the 40 day fast. You see what I'm saying? You may say, well, what that got to do with anything? Let me show you something. There's some ministers that believe that they'll have to go on a 40 day fast to release power. And if they don't get that 40 day fast, then they start to become self-righteous and say, I can't release the power because there's no long 40 day fast. I'm just showing you something. There's some ministers that really think like that, by the way, it's not an exaggeration. So let me show you something. When you start pitting faith and you start pitting faith in the weapons of God instead of the God of the weapons, now you step into the flesh. Are you seeing this? You step into the flesh because the faith is no longer in Jesus of the weapons. It's in the weapons of Jesus. So now you're putting the spotlight on you. The Lord doesn't get true worship anymore. And this is why many people are missing the anointing on their life. By the way, I want to say this to diffuse this. I've gone on long historical fasts which I haven't been liberated to talk about it because it's a purpose for that. Because there's many people that if I start to say that, it'll injure your confidence and start to think, well, I didn't go on a fast like that. So I'm insignificant. No impartation, no demonstration could come to me because until I fulfill what he fulfilled. But see, that's neither here nor there for you. And that's why there's no reason for me to glory in that. But I have fasted before. I can tell you that. And for somebody that have fasted and have not fasted from food and have fasted from water and have not fasted from water, I've gone in dry fasts. I've gone with fasts with water. Let me tell you this. I want to share this with you. And this is the honest truth. The power is not in the fast. As much as the power is in pitting the priority back on the being of Jesus. Because there's people that go on fast. Jesus is not the priority. And they sin more than they ever did after they fasted because they opened up a portal in the spirit world that they couldn't sustain. When I say they couldn't sustain because their heart is not in the right place. How do you occupy in the spirit world? Your heart has to be in the right place. Purity is. It is the stumping grounds. To rule and reign in the spirit world. And if your heart is impure, you can't rule it right. You'll miss it. You can't do anything. And demons will overcome you greater than ever before because you opened up yourself and you couldn't sustain it. That's why we have people that pray. They say that I'm praying, I'm seeking God. Years later, they're strippers. They're on drugs. They're selling their body. They're sleeping from person to person. They're addicted to all type of things. You know why? 
is not because God failed them. They tried to go seek the Lord without the Lord. My goodness. When you seek the Lord without the Lord, sin rises in your life at an all-time high because now Satan is seeking God through you. Because Satan knows that you will not arrive at God's house. You will not arrive at your father's house. Remember what Jesus said, my father's house, I'm in a mansion. The father has an address and his address is invite my spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit via conference. 